Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 442. I'm Sorgatron coming from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk about men in tights. Tight tights. Thank you. Thank well, wow, we're finishing it off. I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, with me this week, it's Bobby to the F to the J Town. The F stands for fundraising. Yes. For right. extra life, which we'll mention here in a little bit at Bobby F J Town on the Twitter is in Johnstown. How you doing, sir? Good. I'm ready for my eyes to bleed this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> for the games. kids. For the kids, right? Kids. Also, yeah. coming at you from parts unknown is Papa Lunchbox at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitters. Hi, guys. Uh, I've been um, injecting myself with uh, Venom, like the Bane Serum Venom, uh, for like a month and a half now. And let me tell you, uh, I ripped a car in half before the show. Wow. That is impressive. Oh yeah, my. So I'm motherfucking ready to go. Still can't update that iPhone, though, huh? Still can't update that iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> also oh. with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, is uh, Mad Mike. I'm on my third and a three quarters podcast this week, sir. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> this is, of course, four technically. <laughs> this is, of course, your Wrestling Mayhem show. You guys can join us here live like many many are uh, right now at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You also get the link over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can subscribe to us on you, on YouTube for the video, on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Spreaker, and on iHeartRadio. You can also drop us a line to that good, good, good email address. Good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or drop us a line of 412 206 WMS0. Um, uh, also on Twitter at mayhem show or uh, check us out, wrestling mayhem show on Facebook, Google, and the great Facebook group. And a big thanks to our friends, our patrons at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including the wrestling revolution.com and Bo Diggity. Woo! Uh, supporting the show directly, and you guys can too if you dig it. And there's plenty of other ways you can support the show too. Just tell friends, tell your friends, comment wherever you find the show, uh, rate us, whatever that mechanism may be. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs up. Um, so let's get started. The only way we know how with our fan mail, and we have so much this week to jumpstart that discussion uh uh bobby i think you have the first one here yes i do and dustin actually told one of his friends about us oh good uh, with that dear mayhem national guard oh that's a reference to raw this week Mm -hmm. i recently had a wonderful conversation with a friend we talked about the reach of the wrestling business to the point that the cult following has inspired us fans to take a relatively new to the public at least uh form of media known as podcasting he asked what exactly it is that makes these things worth checking out, and I instantly referred him to his podcast, Dustin's podcast. Oh. Uh, DSJNP, of course. Uh, Got to whore out my own shit, he says. Uh, but the next thing out of my mouth was the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, when asked why he should bother to take time to listen to the Mayhem show, I educated him on just how funny and smart the perspective of the show was. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, we took time to bring you great podcasts. Hopefully, uh, you'll have a new listener addicted soon enough. Questions. I really enjoyed the main event from last week's Impact. Uh, Rude versus Aries uh, have excellent chemistry. Or Rude and Aries have excellent chemistry. But I was wondering which two wrestlers you'd enjoy seeing a best of series or Iron Man match out of. I wonder if this could be any federation. I, hmm. I think right TNA. now. I think right now I'd love to see a best of series of Seamus and Cesaro. Yeah. Mm, that, that could be, be fun. It would be good. 
Um, I think I think uh, Rollins and uh, Rollins and Ambrose. Yeah, that could definitely good. have a fun one. Or 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 heck, uh, uh, Seth and Brian if he was better. Mm-hmm. Why not Orton and Cena? I was <laughs> best of a hundred. I was God just gonna say, it, it, Bobby, <laughs> you stole mine. Best of a thousand, may we say. They're almost there. They've they've had over two hundred fifty matches together. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. And get and get guess how many of those Randy Orton's won? Seven. Seven. Not a, 30, <laughs> 33. Oh I mean, Bobby, you're on the same wavelength. <laughs> That's the seven series. <laughs> Orton has to win seven sometime, right? Yeah. Out of nowhere. <laughs> All right. Uh, so did we answer that question? Mm-hmm. All right, with the returns of Hogan, Rock, and this week's Mick Foley, uh, who is the next to return that would give you an oh my god, can't believe they're here moment? Vader. Vader. Time. I don't know. He's just like who I would mm-hmm. least expect. Um, are, are we really uh, kind of run through everybody? Because you know, you know who I would. I don't know. Mark Bischoff out for? Huh. I would mark out for John Morrison. I, yeah, I, really I want like John that. Morrison to come back without Molina. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about Molina. <laughs> Just because she, they slighted you that one time at the Comic Con. Tramp. Oh. Wow. Sorry. I mean, you're right, but wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know who I'd really mark out for. Just uh, I, Shelton Benjamin. Hmm. Sheldon Benjamin That'd with his mama. With his mama. <laughs> Tramp. <laughs> she was a lovely lady. She was, she was a lovely lady. <laughs> uh, Goldberg. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Just because it's been so long, right? It has You're been talking so long. And, he, yeah. and he's done the... nothing wrestling in the longest time. Right. Talking about the Mighty Ducks, Goldberg, right? Mighty Ducks, Goldberg. <laughs> That's yeah. what I was talking about. Emilio Estevez, right? Yes. Right? What are we talking about? What podcast is Emilio it? Sheen. What day is it? <laughs> Carlos Estevez. All right. Uh, he goes on to say, um, this is more of a personal reflection, uh, but do you feel that we sometimes prevent ourselves from enjoying uh, wrestling, uh, the wrestling product, because we do critique the product on a weekly basis through podcasts? Yes, completely. I, Why do we yeah, do this? 100% yeah, that's agree. Similar. That's no. something I thought recently. Um, if we didn't have a podcast, we'd be talking about it to our friends anyway. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, if it, I don't think we'd I, be as critical though. I, I no, I don't, I don't think, I think the podcast helps me step back, to be honest, and not because otherwise I'd be breaking the internet by myself in a super critical, super analytical, a- analytical post. You know what I did when I went to a wedding in Baltimore last weekend? Talked about <laughs> wrestling for several hours on the car ride with Matt Carlin's. <laughs> that's what podcast. we did we sat at a wedding and <laughs> and, and and lb had a heart a drunk heart to heart with miss carlin's mrs carlin i did i did do that what did we what do we do when we're not here we're talking wrestling why did we start a podcast because we were talking wrestling at every party we attended yep and and lita's boob popped out yeah, that helped. That helps spur things. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, I don't think the fact that we're doing a podcast, at least in the way that we do it, I don't think we're over analytical. Most of us, Mike. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I, I, like I, logic I Mike, 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 can, is intervention time. There, Mike, uh, uh, hold on, everybody gather around. Mike, sometimes I think you worry too much about pro wrestling. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes I think TNA gets your goat too much. There, there are a lot of times where we'll be watching Raw, and like Mike will go, "Oh no," and I'll be like, "It's fine, it's fine." <laughs> Just like when Mick Foley come out last night, Mike was like, "Oh no, he's gonna be a special guest referee." I'm like, "It's fine. It's good to have Mick Foley back for anything." And and Mike, I don't want you to feel like we're targeting you yeah. in any way, we but are. because we sometimes we think this. <laughs> what? I said, "Yeah, we are." <laughs> I mean, this is but, an intervention for Mike. Yeah, it's, but, it's but, we are, but we are. But we are. But we also have to have a talk with Eamon, too. 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Here's the thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should you should just not watch TNA for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, like when I when well, I uh, to be fair, in a couple no, 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 weeks, no, 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 I'm no, not when, I, have when I shut up. When I put my hand on a burner, like a stove <laughs> burner, and it burns the shit out of my hand, I don't do that anymore. He learned. I take that. I take that away. Learn through pain. But you, there are you things you have been pressing yeah. your face into the the gas burner that is TNA. <laughs> There are things in TNA that I like. Cool. Because if I didn't watch TNA every week, I wouldn't get to see Ethan Carter do awesome things. This is true. This is true. And plus, in in about a month and a half, I'm not going to have to worry about that problem anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I might as well see it through at this point. It's like watching the end of a show that you know is going to die. It's not live anymore. Like Terminator. It, mm-hmm. Bobby, it hasn't been live in eight months. Lunchbox, is you burning your hand called Schrodinger's lunchbox? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense at all. Yes, it no, is. It did. It did. Uh, I don't know if my hand's burned until I pull it away. Can I continue the email? <laughs> yeah, back to yes. the email. That was a nice distraction. I ask, I ask because I wrote my recent article on this very topic. Check it out at talktnapodcast.com slash articles slash words dash r dash weapons. That's right, cheap plug in honor of Mick Foley's return week. Uh, love this week in wrestling for the whole guy, or for, for for the whole guys, and look forward to you guys giving my friend a reason to keep coming back. Regards, Dustin, sent for my speak and spell. Oh, huh, it doesn't say that. I just good. added that because I wanted to say speak and spell. That'd be fun. Um, and I just tweeted his article from the T- Talk TNA podcast uh, to all of our social medias on the Mayhem Show. So if you want to go check for, that out, for the last episode of TNA, we really should have Dustin on here. <laughs> Well, I, I think we should have a uh, after show party of a sort. Um, party. Uh, was this a bad I time for it. was this a bad time, Mike, for me to start an independent feed for the midweek wars? Um maybe. Can we have a TNA wake? A TNA wake? Oh, oh wow, we should. Oh if, my if it goes God, down. Yes, Bobby, we'll if it goes down, I, I, I think we should we should have a wake on that and we should have an introductory thing whenever Global Wrestling actually comes out and when Lucha Underground premieres. That's what we need to do is really kind we'll of target those. We'll have a, we'll have a what? <laughs> Isn't that a Jewish thing? I don't know. Are any of us a little bit Jewish here? Now you coming to the stage, Nana Hanukkah. <laughs> uh, anyways, ne- next email, guys. Okay, and uh, this is from the lovely Chachikins. Uh, Hello, compadres in the squared circle. I had a couple of thoughts I felt I needed to share. Last night, I was confused by the way the street <laughs> fights on Raw were held because I misunderstood the rules and didn't know why there were tags. We had the same question. Yes, we did. Uh, he goes on. A street fight uses the various elements of no holds barred and no disqualification and does allow pinfalls and submissions outside of the ring. Also, like an I Quit match, rope breaks does not apply, so having any part of the body against the ropes will not break a submission or a pin attempt. The only way to get out of a submission is to fight out of the submission attempt, but the person applying the hold can use the ropes or even weapons for extra leverage. Is this copied out of Wikipedia? I believe so. It looks like. It's false. And- uh, yeah, I don't know if street like fights. The rules of a street fight. I don't know if street fights actually allow pins and submissions outside the ring. The rules of a street fight is that there is no rules. Is the rules of the street fight are the rules are whatever fits the storyline that we want to get across. And when you no smash, one watched the mat the the movie No Holds Barred. And when you smash a oh. barrel and a fully cooked chicken pops out, you eat it and regain your health. Yep. Final fight. <laughs> and you have a kangaroo friend that and a black kid on skates. <laughs> what? Ground, I'm just eating ground apples. Wait, did you just like combine Final Fight and Streets of Rage? Yeah, that's rather impressive. Nice. <laughs> wow, the, the the Streets of Ra- I gotta respect the Streets of Rage reference because that's as obscure as you can get. That was my shit when I was a kid. <laughs> Fucking Streets of Rage all day long. <laughs> what have you been? What's your diet like? Oh, whole chickens I find. <laughs> ground apples. <laughs> ground apples. Yeah. <laughs> just, just a ham hock. Bone in ham, hoxy in the street. Okay, back to the email. <laughs> oh god, my my browser just crashed, so I had to bring it up. Um. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay. I got you. I got you. NXT is better than Raw and SmackDown. Discuss. Yes. True. Yes. Very true. 
There's a different level of people trying, and the matches aren't repeated from Friday to freaking Monday. I forget who said it last night. Um, and it, I think it was might have been Brandon Stroud. Uh, he said that NXT has six matches in an hour, and it propels the storyline. Raw has six matches in three hours, and it doesn't propel the storylines at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I really, I, it has to be. They're 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 just too overstretched, or they mm-hmm. just have really bad writers, or they're just going through the motions. And too I, overstretched, not enough main event players. It, it, that might be it too. And, and we were discussing this on the wrap up last night that maybe uh, it, it feels like since they let go of so many people, there's less chance for them to mix it up. Mm-hmm. But then even the people that are still around, you don't you don't even see like a Zack Ryder or Big E much anymore until this week, right? Where's Fandango? Where is Fandango, for instance? Where is Fandango? It's just like they're only using the people that will be on the next pay-per-view. Therefore, you've seen the people that are going to be on the next pay-per-view in every possible configuration. You I, know? I was watching Total Divas on Monday and Sunday. I split them. I think Fandango has been on Total Divas more than he has been on Raw in the past months. Um, Maybe. I don't even, even, th- I don't even think last night. He was on Total Divas last night because they're a couple months behind yeah. in the yeah. storyline, so they're doing the thing with Summer Rae and Layla just feuding. But still, it becomes... he's on Total Divas. I think part of the problem that with what's going on in Raw versus what's going on in uh, NXT is that it's it's um, it's a couple of things: too many cooks in the kitchen and too much editorial mandate. Um, now, I I kind of came up with this theory um, when I was watching Iron Man for panel riot um because it was the first iron man movie and marvel basically said go and do it and make it good and they left them alone they put ja- john favreau in charge and they let him pick a small group of talented people and they they produced absolute gold and that's what's happening on nxt you don't have a lot of editorial mandate for the most part they're left alone and you don't have a billion writers working with a billion wrestlers mm. when you look at raw and smackdown and everything else You've got the full roster, you've got all the writers, and you've got Vince McMahon and everybody else in a position of power nitpicking everything that happens. On um, NXT, you also don't have to worry about sponsors. Some some right. comments mm-hmm. from the chat. Uh, Bloody Landell, the only problem is that they have no... The, the problem is they have no mid-card fuse. There's no attention mm-hmm. to it, really. There, there's fuse, but there's not developing, you know? It's like, oh, let's have... Uh, the such and such on commentary again, and they'll interrupt, and then we'll just do the same thing next week again. Um, you know, it, it's 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 interesting. Like the only thing with anything with Miz that makes it interesting is Miz Dow, and that's mm-hmm. actually different from week to week. That's the only mm-hmm. development happening there. Um, also, Amon says uh, way too overstretched. They have anywhere from seven to ten hours to write a week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I mean, if you even count uh, what well, we got, Raw, Raw SmackDown is is five there, so that's the five that count. And then you have and main event and superstars, main event, which counts now. Which I feel like even that well, does it count? Main event, main event does count now. I mean, I mean, it almost doesn't because it's like okay, we need to write about twenty five minutes of TV and then fill it with whatever recap from Raw mm. in the long run. I don't know about that. It depends on the week of main event. I guess it does. A, a main event, but definitely superstars. Oh yeah, superstars is worthless. That's superstars. Yeah, I think superstars is because they still have an overseas but, contract. But superstars is the equivalent of the superstars and wrestling challenge of back in the day. It's not meant to be a worthwhile show. It's supposed to be, hey, here's another hour of wrestling. We can we can shop around, this right? Wrestling and, and repackage and put out there and give a place for Zack Ryder to play and get beat. True, um, but but back when they had the superstars of wrestling and wrestling challenge, they only had maybe an hour of other television programming a week. So that was that's where true you too went for wrestling. That's true too. Guys, and, and what I'm it, trying to say is I miss Lord Alfred Hayes. Oh, don't we all? Don't we all? Um, Alex says that he'd rather watch Slam City than Raw. Sometimes, speaking of Slam City, is coming to Nickelodeon. Yeah, it's true. Wow, awesome, awesome. I. That's a reason to watch Nickelodeon. Holy crap. Um, you no, know this means Sorg. If it comes to Nickelodeon by the time next year they have New York Comic Con, I might be able to voice a character from Slam City. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they did at their Nickelodeon booth this year. You could voice cartoon characters, and I nice. voiced Michelangelo, and 
that was awesome. I, and and Eamon's pointing out, uh, main event does do tons of story, tons of storyline stuff, and he's he's kind of in the pay per views too. Um, geez, they're going off about main event now. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, next item on the on the emails, Bobby. Oh, um, oh. Uh, Chachi says, I would say Sister Abigail is going to be karma, but crazy cult people are 99% of the time white. One can dream. Oh, I'd be okay with that. I'd, I I kind of hope it's Daphne. I know it's not going to be, but yeah. Daphne makes all of the sense in the world. Yeah. And she doesn't even have to wrestle. She just has to be crazy with Bray Wyatt. I want it to be Bray Wyatt in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's Bray Wyatt in a dress for a little while. And then when that kind of stops being weird, they start switching off. Then you have the other guys just wearing the same dress. And it's the same dress because it's really fucking filthy. Could it be Brianna Wyatt? No. No. I hope not. No. Mm-hmm. God, no. Think about it. I, 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 I was thinking. Man. I know, I know she, she's part of, isn't she part of TNA, but um, uh, Winter? Uh, no, she's not part of She's TNA not with them anymore now. I liked Winter. She would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah she she kind of reminds me of like a witch type. Mm-hmm. I well, I, I mean, this. she did play a lesbian sorceress on Impact, so mm. that's true. That's 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 a voodoo point. queen. No, that no, was that a was different, different character. Oh, that, was, that, that was that was Roxy, 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 Roxy Lavelle. Oh yeah, yep. She was cool oh, too. What was, what was what was the the one the I don't know. I don't know TNA. What? <laughs> This wait, is why we need to have wait, a wait, 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 Bobby. I want to know. I want to know what you were thinking. I want to get inside your mind now. Well, yeah. What's, what was the um the 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 one that would always like grab her boobs? And, like, oh, ODB. 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 Oh, yes, God. that could be Sister Abigail. Pass. That could be. <laughs> I know. I I I'd like. I'd love to Sister see what the, there would be. I can't wait to see ODB on Total Divas. <laughs> oh, I would kill. Kill people uh, to see ODB on Total Divas. Wouldn't that be amazing if that was the 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 new the new cast announcement after the oh, the finale? Would, oh God, that would, would just be kind of sad. I would kill people for that to happen. That would be amazing. It would be. Bertha Faye. Oh, it she died. Didn't she? Bertha Faye. Yeah. Yeah. Did she, she die? I'm sorry. She died. Bertha, Bertha Faye's dead. Oh. No. Oh. I feel bad now. Back to the email, Mike. Bring uh, us back up. Uh, she okay. was a very elegant, um, nice lady. <laughs> um. Be thee well, Chachi. P.S. Hi, Captain N.W. Amen. I miss you. Aw. <laughs> By the way, uh, we are calling Amen N.W. Amen from now on, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, he is. Uh, I think we're allowed to say he's writing for uh, N.W.A. Ringside and and the uh, N.W.A. Magazine now. So nice. that's the wrestling N.W.A., not the other one that we can't see on the air. <laughs> so maybe. Um... It shouldn't have an intervention. Maybe Eamon is taking it exactly as serious as yeah. it needs yeah. to be. <laughs> it's got him this far. I mean, yeah, doing it has. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, LB, I think you got the next one. Oh, I do. I do. WMS comrades. Week after week, I sit in this desk with hatred in my loins and mm-hmm. fire in my heart. And today, I explode because of injustice. That stinking American, poor excuse of man, big show, pew, I spit in your face. <laughs> week in, week out, you bully one of our favorite sons and personal favorite athlete of our honorable and perfect specimen of human male, President Vladimir Putin, less than three. <laughs> we will not stand for your, your atrocities anymore. You call your friends and gang up on our beloved comrade. You tear down our flag. But when Rusev treats you the same way, you'll send your puny marines to attack from behind, leaving Rusev no other choice than to super kick his head off his self-defense. Rusev is not an illegal. Rusev is not a terrorist. Rusev is super athlete, demonstrating he is better than all small Americans. Um, one second. I, I wish that all Russians would say less than three when they say instead of I love you. <laughs> I wish they would just say less than three anytime they say Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Big Joe, you are a bully. You are a bad man. And you are, how do you Americans say, a douchebag. <laughs> Alexander Rusev will prevail. Mother Russia will prevail. Big Show and your American fanatics will fall. Russia, number one. Rusev, number one. Big Show, pure. 
I spit in your face. WMS comrades, I turn to you to unite and take this giant Captain Insano down. <laughs> Zero is sent from my PC computer. Um, I, I would love to think that he wrote every American with two R's, so you kind of tried to roll it when you were reading it. He did. That's why okay. I knew to do it in the Russian accent. <laughs> Because it wasn't, it didn't start in the Russian accent. I didn't want to hit the first Americans. In Soviet like, Russia, Big Show spew spe on you. And I, I want to say two things real quick about this email. Number one, the views and opinions of Zero 2 k do not necessarily <laughs> reflect the views and opinions of the Wrestling Mayhem show. And two, thank you for writing that email because I didn't realize how much I missed doing a Russian accent. <laughs> <for me. laughs> that was a blast. Amazing. All right. With that, hey, let's give a big shout out. Uh, thanks a lot to everybody who emailed us. And please, you can also email us at that email address of Good Times. Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Res- com. Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com. Uh, somebody <laughs> was earlier was asking how to help the show. And I know we talked about the Patreons and everything. But one way, other way you can help the show is to uh, say hi to our friends. <gasps> I don't have a thing set up here. Hold on a second. <laughs> Go on iTunes what? and write us a review. Well, yeah, do that. Yes. Do that. Give Certainly us- do that. Oh, go to sliceonbroadway.com. Hit them, up, hit them up on Facebook. Hit them up on Google. Uh, hit them up on uh, on Twitter. Say you've heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. They're here in the neighborhood. They give us pizza every week. Us. They support us. They support podcasting in Pittsburgh, and we appreciate them. Uh, so please uh, give them props for helping out uh, the show that you're digging right now at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Slice on Broadway. Dot com. Go buy uh, some slices. Go buy some slices. So we got a voicemail from uh, this is from Matt Carlin's. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's see what he oh, yes. has in store for us. Maybe. Oh, I gotta do this thing. Come on, Matt. Don't be shy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ah, this gets me every week. What's up, boys? It's your buddy Matt. Doing a boat tickety style. In the car. Oh. Perusing past the uh, Liberty Tunnels here on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch Raw last night because I'm working nights this week, producing the mainstream television news that you all crave. Um, and I just wanted to see if I could get you guys to clarify exactly what Dean Ambrose was doing on Raw last night because of getting varying degrees of reports as to quality. I heard there was a sex doll. I heard there was a, a popcorn. Uh, I heard uh, McFoley was involved, and uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'll just say it. I'm filled with a perpetual paranoia that um, the WWE creative is going to absolutely screw up Dean and ruin this fun little toy for all of us, and I do mean all of us. And uh, I, I need some clarification, and I need you guys to, to just kind of like. Let me know. I mean, I, I know I've talked about this before. I'm, I'm absolutely freaking out that the, the more determined WWE becomes to get Dean Ambrose over as a face, the less I will enjoy him. Um, and I want to find out if, if these fears are my own or if I can share them with others. That's all. So I hope you enjoy this voicemail, and I wish you all a good day. Well, there you go. So- so uh, he's worried about they're going to screw up Dean Ambrose. Uh, what happened on Raw last night? Well, first, I, I brought up uh, to illustrate if you guys are on video some pictures from WWE.com. First of all, he comes out with a giant bag that uh, I think it was leg kick TKO on the Twitters that determined this was the CZW going away gift bag. <laughs> As we discovered, uh, as they went uh, as they went along, and of course it was um, the uh, a lame attempt. Uh, I'm sure you can get a WWEshop.com at a Seth Rollins real sex doll, <laughs> which he promptly started torturing with drills and and tongs to the balls that would make Jimmy DeMarco proud. And, was that a screwdriver? That long thing? I believe um, so. I think it was. Okay. There was a saw. He ripped his arm off. Um, I, I, well, that looked like he was doing something very sexual to it in this shot. Um, yeah, it, I, you know, e- even though it was a doll, 
uh, or a, a dummy. Like it, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, they did it um, after the 10 o'clock hour. So, um, and of course that led to Mick Foley coming out. Uh, which I, I think was influenced by, what's that Mike? I, I, I think Dean is influenced by the violent movie. He watched earlier. The evening. That might be too. Yeah. And then that was, he was, he was watching see no evil, which Mad Mike did <laughs> as well. Mad Mike, you watched see no evil today. Uh, did you throw your popcorn around? First of all, um, no, but I did horrible things to my bro to Clay Russell, buddy. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Did you, he did you also, <laughs> did you also co- confuse, <laughs> did you also start calling yourself the Titty Master afterwards? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, titty master. Fair, I've called myself the Titty Master since Ought 3, so. <laughs> Your girlfriend doesn't listen to the <laughs> show, right? I like that you called it Ought 3. 1903? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, Bobby. Thirteen oh three. Oh, okay, okay. There's that. There's that. Um, are we uh, are we concerned about what they're doing with Dean in his faces face faciousness? Um, I'm not. I think this is in- oh. interesting. This, hey, you know, in, in a raw where we're talking about how little they're doing with everybody and how we're having the same match with with Cena and Orton, this is something unique. He has been the most interesting character on Raw the past month since he's come back. Yes. Mm-hmm. Listen, uh, Matt is only worried about them dealing with him as a face because they've screwed up every time they've turned someone face in recent uh, memory. So you know, I I think they're I think they're on the verge of trying a little too hard with Dean Ambrose. Mm-hmm. They're on the verge of tr- because they're trying to give they're trying to make him be the stone cold of this generation because he's against the authority. He's doing wacky things with hot dog carts and screwdrivers and things like that. Um, I think they need to maybe have a week where he's toned down a little bit because this isn't the attitude or you can't have like Stone Cold run a Zamboni into the ring. Every well, week. when's the last time they've done something like that? Why not? Mm-hmm. We haven't done it in so long. Why can't oh, Dean Ambrose no, be they, that guy that does it? Were, they were trying so hard to make uh, Daniel Bryan the new Stone Cold. Yeah. What they were really yeah, hard they were. against that. Yeah. They were. So what failed on that? Was the the that effort what that failed, or oh, was no. it his injury that failed? It was just the injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all. They were doing fine. Yeah, you know? no, they they weren't they weren't on a bad run with it, and things got weird after they won the title because he got injured. For one thing, well, it's not it's not also because he got injured. Once he won the title, immediately feud with King. Yeah, it's like. They didn't have a plan once he got to the title. Mm-hmm. They well, didn't oh, have that plan and also, because he wasn't going to wrestle Triple H for but it. But it's also it, also it's a it's a middle ground. I I think he was supposed to meet that law for a few months there, take on Kane, which will be a, just an obvious you know just temporary throw, threat. Throw a few. And, and, yeah, until until they got to something like SummerSlam and they, they did something bigger. Maybe him and Brock Lesnar was supposed to come up. They they I think they wanted him to be Stone Cold. But they were treating him like Chris Benoit. Oof. Well, no, no. I, I mean, like Chris. No, Benoit I know. I know exactly what you mean. Because 2004, they... like when he won the title, yeah, he was in a triple threat match with both members of DX. He made one of them tap out, and then right after that match, he had the rematch, and then boom, feud of Kane. <laughs> so Kane like... is the, Kane is the mark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's almost like when. When you blow off the big angle and they don't have anything for you, they're like, oh, yeah, Kane's still a big seven-foot guy who can be kind of intimidating if he doesn't have a hook in his hand. Sure. <laughs> not corporate Kane. And, of course, no, not corporate plus Kane, they no. were also doing that weird thing where he just magically became Demon Kane. And he's yeah, just yeah, interchangeable. Like back and forth. Yeah. Why did he upstage Triple H's music last night? <laughs> <laughs> like they play Triple H's music, and then all of a sudden, Kane does his explodey thing, and then they play Kane's thing, and I'm like, "What just happened? <laughs> like, why did? Why would you do that to your boss?" <laughs> Probably because they realized that they had already preloaded the Kane pyro, so he's like, "Oh, I guess we better do this." Oh, now we got we gotta burn this pyro. <laughs> <laughs> gotta use it. <laughs> wow! You know how much this pyro costs? This pyro costs three fifty. You need so, to use it. So, so Let's going scare into the crap out of the audience. And we'll we'll talk more about the pay per view. But going into Hell in a Cell, what, what, uh, do you think Dean Ambrose slash Seth Rollins are in, are in a good position? Um, if they end the show, could, could I? Could I? Yeah. Um, I had a theory about Seth Rollins today. Could I? Could I share my theory? Uh, sure, you have you have the floor. 
Um, I have the conch. What? I was um, gonna say Bobby has the conch. Piggy has the conch. <laughs> Bobby. I love literary references <laughs> on the Mayhem Show. Um, last night I got I got the th- uh, this morning I got the thinking. Okay. Well, actually, it was around lunchtime. Uh, Randy Orton RKO'd Paul Heyman. Okay. Yes. Seth Rollins for. No reason last night curb stomped Randy Orton. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you think that maybe Seth Rollins is a Paul Heyman guy? Mm. Do you think they're setting something up like that might have him joining forces with Seth Rollins, maybe? I think they and did that to make you ask questions. Maybe. Maybe. And to interrupt I, your lunchtime with these but, thoughts. But why else would they make... Seth Rollins curb stomp Randy Orton. Like, it makes no sense other than him doing that to Paul Heyman, I think. It's just what, what I thought. I think it might be to set up intrigue that eventually down the line we might have an Orton Rollins match. Either that or after Hell in the Cell, they're probably going to do Survivor Series. Yeah. And if they do a four man team, Lord knows Rollins and Orton are going to be on the same team. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But why would you have. I don't know. Just Seriously. that was just. It's just to add that extra layer of something can happen. You know what that means? Nobody's having a true one-on-one in Hell in a Cell this weekend. Mm-hmm. That's what that means to me. Also, Seth um, Rollins is a wizard. I th- I think they actually are going to be interference-free with a jetpack. I really I really think that. Okay. Because it, this is a big blow-off for Ambrose and Rollins. It has to be. Yeah. And Cena and Orton. God knows we don't need Kane interfering in that. Maybe Rollins, but I don't see anyone else interfering in that match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Any other thoughts? Any other worries about Ambrose? About Seth Rollins? About anything else going on there on 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 Raw before we go to break? Uh, I, I agree with Mike. If they put him in the main event slot of the pay per view, uh, then everyone will be like, "Well, they delivered." If they put him anywhere else on the card everyone's going to be like, well, they stole the show. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, yep. That's going to be the highlight no matter what. Yep. I mean, he's on the poster, for Christ's sake. He should be named mm-hmm. something. That doesn't mean nothing. I mean, yeah. let's, I mean, R-Truth, was on. Yeah, R-Truth was on the cover. <laughs> 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 let's, let's be honest. Two that's posters, as we, as we learned last night. <laughs> What's that? R-Truth was on two posters, as we learned last night in the Hangout. Oh, yeah. 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 What is he on? Capital Punishment and what, Hell in a Cell? Or? Hell in a Cell, yeah. He's on Hell in a Cell? Why would they yeah. do that? We asked that very same question when they released it. He was in a weird suit. I think it was last year, too. Wow, that's that's really odd. Really, really odd. Anyways, on that note, guys... Um... <laughs> Hey, there's a lot of wrestling going on. Uh, of course, uh, this past weekend was IWC Retro Reunion, a big show for an international wrestling cartel within Pittsburgh, PA. Um, so really cool stuff going on there. Uh, uh, we had, of course, DJ Z uh, from... Uh, burr, 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 burr. Yeah, there, thank you. I was waiting for that. Uh, involved, of course, another regular in Colin Delaney, the former ECW uh, WWE uh, uh, guy there. Uh, great up up and comers like Dalton Castle, RJ City. You'll be hearing about these guys very soon, I promise you. Um, Dalton Castle has the sweetest shirt of all time. Yes, he does. Um, <laughs> you can check, even though even though he can't get a table, he has to sell his wares on a box. Um, all kinds of good stuff. That retro reunion will be up this week in digital download. You can get it uh, for uh, I believe it's going to be nine ninety nine or single matches for two bucks a piece uh, over at SorgatronMedia.com slash store. Other great stuff going on there, including uh, several AJ Styles best of indies indie matches and interviews that you're not you're not going to get anywhere else from the IWC and outsource announcing Joe Dombrowski.com. Uh finding Zach Gallon, the documentary about the wrestling's only one legged wrestler. I I could we could say that when it was released. I can tell you that. Uh damn it huh. TNA. Uh but go check out all that stuff. Digital downloads you can download it tonight. Uh, for much cheaper than you're going to on DVD or at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. And right now, if you sign up to the mailing list, uh, the, the the newsletter on the side of sorgatronmedia.com, you'll get for free IWC's 100th show um, 
uh, a call to arms night one, including a three way between AJ Styles, Daniel, uh, excuse me, Christopher Daniels. I'm, I'm screwing up the wrong Daniel uh, and homicide. Danielson. Uh, Larry Sweeney and, and delirious and a whole bunch of other cool guys are, are a part of that show. You get it for free just for signing up to the mailing list, to the newsletter list to find out everything going on across the podcast, across the releases. Uh, so with that, we're going to take a short, short break and we'll be right back with remember when let's talk tech tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in pittsburgh online gadgets startups and more check it out at awesomecast.net this is johnny gargano the bees knees the cat pajamas and the whole jabang not johnny bananas by the way even though i like to eat them and you're watching the wrestling mayhem show Hey guys, welcome back, and uh, please go check out all that stuff at sorgatronmedia.com slash store and all the other places you can help support. That supports the podcast if you support sorgatronmedia.com slash store because that's our platform, guys. And and if anything's going to be int- int- into those, it'll be you guys that watch this show a lot. Um, so with that, uh, our favorite, our, uh, my favorite segment of the week, I like this when we like to reach back into, into our memory banks into the YouTubes in our brain, and, and, and we remember what. We're going to remember when. We're going to remember when. We're going to remember when that thing happened. We're going to remember when. We're going to remember when. We're going to remember when that thing happened. You remember when that thing happened? You remember when that thing happened? Fuck you, assholes! You fucked me up. It's done. Go, go. I had the, I had the theme playing in the background so I could stay with the beat. Oh, I'm sorry. You <laughs> fucked me up. God damn it! I was on a roll. Go. Terrible what panelist. What is it? What's remember when this week? What is it? This week on remember when we're going to talk. This week about- on remember when we are talking. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. LB, do yeah. you want to take this? No, I'm sorry. Are you sure? Orc is not an orc. Don't take it from LB, Jake. this week on Remember When, we're going to remember. That's your cue. Oh, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, Hell in the Cell. Hell in the Cell. This is working. Ah, it's going to be so good and so terrible. So we're going to talk about our uh, favorite Hell in the Cell moments. Yeah. And, uh, I'll start because I have one. You have one. Um, Vengeance, WWE Vengeance 2005. There was a culmination of a long, long bubbling feud uh, between two of the top superstars in the WWE at the time. Uh, in this corner, Triple H, and in this corner, Dave Batista. The uh, Dave had turned on, or Triple H turned on Dave, and then Dave turned on. It was the evolution exploded basically, and this was the culmination of that feud. Um, and uh, for two wrestlers that I didn't enjoy at the time and I'm not huge fans of now, these guys put on a damn good show in a Hell in the Cell match. There was weapons involved. There was blood involved. There were steps. It was bonkers. They did a great, great job. And uh, since you out there have the WWE Network and you pay your nine ninety nine a month, uh, go and check it out. Vengeance 2005. It was a great, great match. Awesome. Awesome. What about you, Mike? Um, well, my remember when is, um, it, it's, it's, it's the Brock Lesnar Undertaker Hell in a Cell match. Damn it. Sorry. Sorry. I knew I was, yeah, I knew I was going to take, tonight. I knew I was going to take someone's. Um, but the thing that struck me the most about that is Paul Heyman got busted open and he never entered the cell. <laughs> <laughs> That's how brutal the Hell in a Cell used to be. Because Taker reached in, uh, reached out rather, and grabbed Paul Heyman's tie and just kept pulling him into the cell until he got busted open. And that was the first real brutal match, the brutal Hell in a Cell match, to not have a spot where someone flew off a part of the cell. And that's that's why it really stuck out for me because they didn't have to resort to any like big gimmick spot or anything like that. All right, all right. Uh, I'm sorry, LB. What was the one you said? 
I said uh, Triple H and Batista at uh, Vengeance 2005. Okay. I, I wanted to add on for that because that was, damn it, that was my backup too. Um, <laughs> that one was great. You remember remember going into that, like how that was, if I recall, after the One Night Stand pay-per-views, and it seemed like it was a response to ECW, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, um, it's like we've neutered ECW, but we are going to go ahead. Well, no, 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 no. I think it was like more. the first, like, like when One Night Stand first came back in ECW, or maybe it was when ECW first jumped on TV. Oh, uh, when they first it, came back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was like one of those first go arounds. And it was very much as like, wow, these guys are saying, hey, we can do this too. You know, mm-hmm. that was really the feeling off of that. So, and, and, and Mad Mike, again, another one, like I, I specifically on that one, I remember, I think I remember Brock Lesnar hanging from the top of the cage and kicking him in the face. Am I thinking uh, the right one? I, I don't know. I don't remember that part of it, but the, it was, only thing again, I, the only thing I remember was after the match was over, Brock climbed to the top and posed with the title, but I don't remember yeah, yeah. them doing like a hanging spot or anything like that. Might be the one. Might be the one I'm thinking. Maybe it's Randy Orton one, but anyways. Bobby, what do you got? You're going to take my third backup? Picture it. Picture it. December 10th, the year 2000. Oh. Birmingham, Alabama. Armageddon. Rikishi falling into a truck full of hay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> The Rock's promo before that match was also amazing because he yeah. imitated every single other person in that match. But Kurt Angle won that match. Now the Undertaker, Triple H, Steve Austin, Rikishi, and The Rock in a six-man Hell in a Cell. Yeah. yeah. Now I I didn't get the witness like the first couple of Hell in a Cells when they happened. Um, I think the first one I got to witness on pay per view was. Oh, I Unfor- hope it wasn't Big Boss Man. Actually, too. it might have been the Big Boss Man one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't get that one on pay-per-view. So I think the first one I saw live on pay-per-view was the Undertaker, um, uh, not Undertaker, uh, Triple H and Cactus Jack. Nice. Um, and this was, um, you know, in retrospect, maybe not the best match, but a very, very good match. It was very good. And this was, um, and this was, uh, uh, no way out. They had just had the street fight at, at Royal Rumble, which was also tremendous. Um, and I think this was, yeah, if he, if he lost, he was supposed to retire, even though he came back at WrestleMania the next month mm. as McFoley, by the way. Yes. Um, but of course, they did redo the cage spot, obviously, with not nearly as dangerous as the first time around and supposed to happen. Uh, but we also got to see, if I, if memory serves, we got to see uh, the barbed wire bat on fire. Yes. Which and I think Triple was... H, Triple H actually took that shot to the face. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, and that was kind of the, uh, you know, that ECW spot or that if you watch Strangle Mania like I did spot uh, with him and Terry Funk in Japan, you know, you got to see like, this is happening in WWE right now, you know, uh, uh, kind of kind of point to that. Um, and again, yeah, it was back remember, when, what's that? I'm sorry. I, I, I remember fully talking about it in his book and he was like, the one thing I had going through in my mind was I really don't want to drop this lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Because he lit it when they were on top of the cell. That's so right. If he dropped the lighter, then the whole spot wasn't going to happen. Yep, yep. Incredible. There, there have been, or will have been, after this weekend, thirty Hell in a Cell matches. Wow. Nice. Now, granted, they've had about two apiece at the Hell in a Cell pay per view for several years now. Actually, mm-hmm. they had three in two thousand nine. Wow. Mm-hmm. And they've. The, and this is also including apparently there was a raw super show in 2011 in Kansas City where they had a five man hell in a cell dark match. Oh, wow. wow. That's this, this I just I just noticed as I pulled up the Wikipedia. Uh, John Cena defeating Alberto Del Rio, CM Punk, Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger. Wow. Something I would like to see that. I kind of like to see that one, too. Maybe they'll pop up. On the, did they put that on the DVD. It wasn't on the uh-huh. after raw DVD. Um and they've had you know two of them on Rise War. Why not have the Royal Rumble in a Hell in a Cell? <laughs> you know they did actually they did release a Hell in a Cell DVD recently. I, I remember watching through it and they did have these couple of raw ones. I didn't yeah, get very one, far into one it. One of them was Kane versus Mankind. Yeah, 
uh, which was a no contest. And there was a tag team Hell in a Cell with Taker and Stone Cold against Mankind and Kane. Another no contest. Hmm. How do they go no contest in, 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 in freaking Hell in a Cell? But I don't know. So there you go. Hell in a Cell. Oh, oh, from the chat room. Hold on. Where'd I put that tab? Uh, there's a lot of activity going on in there. Um, again, uh, uh, cars uh, seconding the uh, the the six man Hell in a Cell uh, from Armageddon. Uh, Hell in a Cell where fully broke the ring. I think that's the one we were talking about from uh, No Way Out. Uh, oh, that uh, well, or the 1998 one with mm-hmm. Taker. Uh, did he really break the ring in that one? Oh no, he he broke the cell, not the ring. Yeah, Riz was at King of the Ring in 1998. Ken Shamrock won the King of the Ring over The Rock, and nothing mm-hmm. else happened. Then nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> and I, yeah, here's here's one of the more memorable moments of. of uh, ugh. Okay, I'll show this one. And also from from the Twitters, uh, Dustin remembers either Kane ripping the cell door off, or Punk climbing to the top to Kane the shit out of Paul Heyman. Yeah. Let's go to Kane! Yeah, that was the first time in a while that somebody actually climbed to the top of Hell in a Cell for, for a long time that they did that. Um, also, want, what's that? I want somebody to take that. That's got to be Kane and do it in the NSYNC remix. It's going to be it's me. It's going to be Kane. <laughs> That's got to be Kane. <laughs> do you guys remember when um, Bobby Lashley burst through the cell wall at Umanga? Yeah. That, that was, was weird. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Um, oh, yeah. Probably last year's cool. Uh, random, random fact. Buddy Lindell is is saying in the chat. Uh, he says he was at a Raw live in June. Uh, they threw Bray Wyatt into the mud pit that Stephanie and, and Guerrero went in after Raw. Huh. So that's cool. Um, they never heard about that. Uh, didn't the ring break in '98? I don't think it did. I, like the cage broke, but and no, he landed the on the ring. ring. Break the ring didn't break in that one. They had they had him kind of sink into the ring uh, when he did the same thing when they reenacted it basically in the. Uh, well, that, that's one. because like in '98, the ring the cage wasn't supposed to break. No, that was an accident. So when they did again, they gimmicked it so the ring and the cage would break. The ring and the cage would break as fall. Um. Excellent. So uh, let us know your King of the Ring. Remember when's if there's anything we missed. There's 30 matches. What's that? I want to sell. You said King of the Ring. King of the Ring. Yeah, okay. Uh, (laughs) Or your King of the Ring remember when's. We'll do that sometime too, I guess. I guess. Um, Never again. That's another thing. That's another thing they could use for the mid card is make another King of the Ring tournament. Yeah, and make it out on the pay-per-view and one night like they used to do. Yeah, why not? They have no slots, and they keep like yeah. changing them up. So let's get rid of Battleground and make it King of the Ring. Yeah, you know it's a, it's a great How's concept. Battleground, anyways, still works. You're repeating everything else. Why not repeat that one? Mm-hmm. Um, hey, want to give a shout out first? Hey, Bobby F J Town. Yeah, I think there's something going on this weekend, and I think you and I are involved in such things. There is. What is this thing involving? I feel like I'm going to be doing something for a very, very long time that involves my thumbs. Um, <laughs> spice up that love life. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be playing video games, sword for twenty four hours. That sounds a lot safer than the thing that LB was suggesting. Yeah. Listen, it's perfectly safe if you use lube. Hashtag butt bombs. <laughs> um, but anyways, All no. Right. So so we, we and we're donating. Um, the money goes to a children's hospital for yeah. them to get video games for. The kids that are stuck in the hospital, right? Yeah, poor kids. And what? Don't have anything to play. And what hospital is that? The what? Uh, Saint Vincent's Hospital of Erie. And why did we pick Saint Vincent's Hospital of Erie, or Bobby, whoever you are? Because they do not get a lot of donations, and our very own Bo Diggity was born there. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And it's Erie, PA. I, I, you know, and we do. We've been involved with other things for Children's Hospital here in Pittsburgh. Um, You should have seen all the stuff that got trucked in there just one year from that. Uh, You know, some people here in Pittsburgh do great, great things raising money uh, to make sure they're stocked up there. Uh, But you know, I think it's great that you know we're looking at a smaller yeah. s- smaller oh. organization that doesn't have the assets in a smaller that town is. and 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 you know not everybody lives in pittsburgh you know so there were, why not there were rumors that they only had a game boy and a super nintendo wow 
Yeah. Wow. So we're going to do what we, what we can uh, to help them out. Uh, we're taking donations. If you go over right now to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, there's a link over there on the side for Extra Life for you to help out. Uh, pick any of us on the team. Riz is on there, too. Bobby and myself. There's some ladies that you don't know yeah, unless cool. you... Unless you're interested in, in, to insert coin to begin. Um, but you go donate. It doesn't matter which one of us you pick. It all goes to a good cause. And you can join us here on this stream as you do on Tuesday nights. We're going to be starting at 10 a.m. Saturday morning, October 25th. Uh, you can find us. We'll be using the same chat rooms. I'm going to have both feeds up of our Hangout. And I'm going to have my feed plugged in here. And if you guys have any other video feeds you have going on, uh, we're going to plug them all in here too. So you can watch all of them. Uh, all in one convenient place where you guys are used to. And uh, we're going to be tweeting. I'm, I'm going to try to tweet while I'm playing video games. We'll see how that goes. Maybe, if, my, maybe my lovely assistant will help me through the through the weekend uh, over here. If, if somebody donates $100 or 50 to $100, I will play Rumble Roses for an entire hour. Again. Oh, man. I wish I could get my hands on Rumble Roses. Rumble Roses XX, I believe. Does my brother have Rumble Roses? Maybe. I am taking <laughs> donations for games to play. <laughs> so, um, my if dad I, wants you to play another hour of that Sesame Street game. By the way, <laughs> I, I, I I hope I can get it working. <laughs> A second hour. There are three games on that cartridge. Uh, <laughs> we we selected that if, if I can get it working, I'm going to play Sesame Street ABC for the NES to start this thing off. And there's we three. Oh, I had that. There, maybe there's two TK games. 14, Actually, right? there might only be two games. There's a Ferris wheel game, and then there's a Ernie's Rubber Ducky. Uh, it's kind of like uh, I, I don't know, some kind of match game or you something. You have WWE 2K14, right? Uh, I have WWE 12. Oh, well, maybe we can do Royal Rumble on there if, is, yeah, if it has online support. Yeah. I, well, I think that one does have online support, sir. All right, then so, we can. This one I got mad because it wouldn't work half the time. Too. So. Um, Alex Cars is wondering in the chat room if you will still be taking donations during the Extra Life game. Yes, we yes, we will. Yes, we will. All yes, day, we will. all day, even after it. Yep. Yep. Even after it, uh, they 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 allow you to have a certain time to stop with donations, and I think it might be year round you can donate. Yep. So actually, go check that out uh, again. Click that link over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com for Extra Life, and please donate and help out the cause. Um. Riz says $50, I will play any game you choose on the Xbox 360. Uh, I'm going to be hooking up as many systems as I can to my TVs down here that, that and and to the uh, stream. Uh, so I'll hopefully have a pretty big selection. Uh, myself, I yeah. got... Yeah? Buddy, Buddy Landell from the chat says, uh, will I play it in the uh, Monarch Henchman outfit? I will if he donates. Oh, man. If he donates up to uh, 50 to $100, I will. Oh, man. <laughs> well, that that would be great. I think you One should anyways. Game in that outfit <laughs> wow uh so go check that out all right guys hell in a cell like we talked about with the remember when um hell in a cell is this weekend on wwe network for an undisclosed amount of money according to mick foley uh <laughs> oh mick foley oh mick foley <laughs> he's not going to be part of the next version of that song um like santa stuff oh, yes exactly <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so we got a few matches, of course, that we talked about a little bit. Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, uh, Hell in a Cell. Thank you, it happened. They didn't screw this thing up. Um, well, they kind of did because well, they gave, they gave the, the, the rematch with Brock Lesnar to the winner of Randy Orton and John Cena, even though yeah. the winner of the match, <laughs> you know, just, just, uh, why? <laughs> it's frustrating. It's it like, like. They they did so much to make it seem like Randy Orton wasn't the consolation prize. <laughs> it's it's like it's like let's make a deal <laughs> where Seth where where Dean Ambrose won and he picked the door and the door had the whammy prize in it. He did, he gets nothing for winning, you know. But John Cena gets the title match against Brock Lesnar if he beats Randy Orton. I I thought we were going to have something where. Orton was upset about Rollins going to bat for him. Like, why are you interfering in my business? And then he goes to Triple H and say, "Hey, listen, since there's something online in my on the line in my match, maybe there should be something online in Seth's match. Like, could be maybe the Money in the Bank briefcase. But I mean, I guess they could still do that on SmackDown, especially pre-show. after after the um, maybe the, the pre-show, curb, the curb stomp to the head. Because I'm sure Orton's not going to be thrilled about that." Because they're not having matches on the pre-show. 
Oh uh, yeah, because those matches on the pre-show weren't the best thing on the show sometimes, and didn't make you really want to watch them. Listen, they've apparently used the midgets in every way they can. They thought of. Oh, Sorg! No, that's not true at all. Sorg, because they're not. We now, they, we now have a bunny in play. We do have a bunny in play. We we can have a triple threat. We all see only have one of the people be regular sized. A furry three way. The gator. Uh, watch Burrito, watch the where you're saying furry three way on the internet. No 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 no. I mean it exactly the way I mean it. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> And of course, our other, our other, uh, I guess, main event is going to be John Cena and Randy Orton, also in the cage. This one for the rematch, as we mentioned. Um, yay! Yawn. Yawn. And I don't think have they they have not they have not met in Hell in a Cell. Seven thousand falls. Yes, they have. This is the first Never ever mind. rematch in a cell. Never mind. Uh, it is oh. Randy Orton defeated John Cena. At a Hell in a Cell pay per view, the night they had three of them, by the way, one uh, of thirty three times in 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 two. <laughs> I yeah. still I still can't believe when I looked that stat up last night that the greatest rivalry in WWE history is like John Cena has two hundred twelve wins, Randy Orton has thirty three. Never give up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wow. I, you know, cool that they did it by the numbers, right? Hmm. I liked it. Yeah. It yeah. seems like it's worthwhile. It's one of the big things that happens, like it's, big pay per views. It's reminding you how good Hell in a Cell used to be. Yes. Yeah, because... which they want to do to sell tickets. This could be as good. Yeah. It's not going to. Hey, if they had Hell in a Cell in Pittsburgh, I'd go. Mm hmm. Yeah, me too. You guys know you guys know who's great? Hmm. John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred and twelve times. You can't lose. You can't I lose. don't know, man. John no Cena what happens no matter what happens when the smoke clears, John Cena's gonna be holding that title. Come on. No, no he isn't. There's no title no. at the pay per view. No, no, Somebody no, has I'm a title about, hostage. I'm not talking about tonight um, at the pay per view. I'm talking about in the future. Oh, it doesn't matter who wins at Hell in the Cell. It doesn't matter what happens. When it all comes down to it, John Cena is going to have that title back. I'm telling you guys, he's you, you really you got to you got to join me in the Cena boat. When, when Cuz the Cena boat floats. <laughs> what? The banana boat? <laughs> all other boats sink. The Cena boat floats. The but Cena that's boat only because it's sailing on a sea of money and literally can't sink. Yeah, it can't sink, Mike. You can't fucking do. I picked the best up. wrestler. I'm a fan of the best wrestler in WWE. <laughs> can't lose. It's a solid bet. It's like buying Apple stock before they debuted the iPhone. Can't fucking lose. <laughs> oh, that being said, I would love to see Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I would. So I could totally skip a pay per view. <laughs> when, when, when... <laughs> fuck both of those guys. Uh, Bobby, when 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 Lunchbox said the future, I wanted to go the future, Andy, in the year two thousand. The year two thousand. It is like we're revisiting the year two thousand nine anyway. John so. Cena is still the champion. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Accurate assessment. <laughs> John Cena will beat Randy Orton for the hundred or two hundred and thirteenth time. <laughs> mm -hmm. At Hell in the Cell, I'll, I'll be Cena. there with a boner the size of a baseball bat. <laughs> one just, of those, just in, reveling, just just one of those pouring. inflatable ones, the giant inflatable. <laughs> That's right. Just pouring fucking barbecue sauce on it. Just thrilled to be alive. Oh God, John Cena fan. Doesn't get any better than this, boys. Bruh, give me more of that sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. Pour some Coke on it. <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> we broke I'm, con I'm converting people, Sorg. I'm converting people to become John Cena fans. Converting to this Church of C Nation. <laughs> church of C Nation. All right, let's 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 move on from there then. Um, also. <laughs> Also happening at Hell in a Cell. Uh, mm -hmm. Once again, uh, we have Golden Stardust uh, against yes. the Usos. 
Yay! Hey, hey, you know, it's going to be a good I'm match. They, they always yeah. have a great match at the pay-per-views and just boredom in between. I wish yep. it was in the cell. Kind of. Yeah. It's funny. I would like to see every match in the undercard in a cell and not the main event in a cell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Reverse hell in the cell. <laughs> No, that's TNA. We're not Double watching the TNA. first hell in the cell. All right, all right. Uh, and of course, Rusev and Big Show. You think? What do you think we're doing here? Uh, falling asleep. Mark oh. Henry turns. <laughs> Crying at some point. Mark Henry yeah. returns. Mark, Mark Henry becomes the Black Russian. Oh. Uh, what? Yeah. You think he converts? No, Mark, I I think. Well, no, I don't think he converts. But I think he turns heel. Huh. I think, yeah, it'll set up a Mark Henry Big Show feud. Oh, Thank good. You. Just what I've always wanted. Yeah. I know. Another Merry one. Merry Christmas. <laughs> just in time for Christmas. <laughs> what if Rusev just keeps going until the Salute the Troops show? He's going to keep going until WWE figures out if they want to sign Kurt Angle or not. <laughs> <laughs> this is that's, all that's a bait for Kurt Angle. And if, if they decide not to sign Kurt Angle... Then guess who's going to beat Rusev? LB, I think you know. There we go. <laughs> See his fingers in the air. Okay. Okay. He's an okay wrestler, but amazing. Everything else. Fucking John Cena. Somebody, somebody got some bumpy knuckles over there. <laughs> bad, bad man. Oh, yes. I think Sorg's done. <laughs> Jane Gang is the quick. You guys just go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> you guys, Talk you amongst just, yourselves. You got, I'll give you, you a topic. This. You got this. The Bella feud is neither Bella's nor feuds. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I, is that going to be in a cage? No. Oh, I wish. Yeah, I want that to be in a cell, too. Maybe. I want the whole undercard to be in cells, and it's not. I like how, like, like the website's reporting it, like whoever loses is gonna be the other person's bitch. But like for PC reasons, they're like personal assistant. Personal assistant for a month. And if they lose, they're out of the WWE. That could be some entertaining stuff, though. Except it's the Bellas. You know, if they don't fulfill the obligation. Fucking Bellas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, hey, you know, if nothing else, we have two Divas matches on this yeah. pay per view again. One's what? Paige and AJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one's Paige and AJ. Which is fine. Yep, keep it going. Keep it, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Switch the title again if you have to. Sure, you know? I mean, AJ can be like the highest uh, 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 diva-titled person uh, because mm-hmm. she just switched like four times back and forth with uh, with Paige. Sure. Um, that title looks like a tattoo anyways, back tattoo. <laughs> Nobody cares about it. It's exactly. called Stamp Tramps, Bobby. Yeah, I know. Tramp Stamp Championship of the World. I see oh. Stamp Tramps? Fuck. You said Stamp Tramp, yeah. Uh, Tramp Stamp Championship of the World! Oh, that's about that ham, time. slam, slam, ham, ham, And finally, a ham, slam, ham, slam, slam. Um, <laughs> Sheamus and The Miz. What? There's no IC title on this? No, I think there is. It, well, yeah, there has to be, I hope. There, there's not on the site yet. Of, of course, we did just beat the IC champion like two weeks in a row. There's a match on SmackDown. Though. Every show possible, so that might that might set it up. You think? Um, Mizdow somehow Damian Mizdow has to win this belt. I really hope so. Okay. He's he's kinda... Way more over than the Miz. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Somehow, like I hope I said this on the wrap up or during the hangout. One of those. I hope he somehow sneaks in, like during a roll up, so the referee can't see his head, and. The ref counts the pinfall, thinking it's Miz because they're obviously wearing the same tights, even though <laughs> one's more orange. And then it comes out of the roll up. Miz down, his hand is raised, and the ref is confused. And Miz grabs the championship, but Miz down's like, "Wait, I won the belt." He's like, "Wait, I was in the match. Like, I, I, well, I need this. I need this in my life." Is it wrong of me to want them to go for the tag team championship, though? I want them to go for the tag titles. Cool. I think it'd be good. I, the only way they could do the tag team champions is if they did the if is if they t- tried to do the twin magic thing. Uh, tried. Amy, tried. Look like each other. 
<laughs> yeah, like they, they try to do it every week, and the ref's like, um, no, you're not the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> also, Sorg, were you looking at pictures of my woman? What? Were you looking at pictures of my woman? Oh, shit. What are you? What? What can you oh, see Becky, over here? Becky Lynch. There's somebody tweeted something about Becky Lynch. I was wondering what um, it was about. Um, she, I tweeted her and said I am in love with Becky Lynch after NXT, and she favorited it. So therefore, that means by proxy, she is in love with me also, and we're getting married. Wow, uh, haven't set a date yet. Um, Bobby, 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 are, Bobby. Are you, reg- are you registered at a WWE shop? Bobby, I'm not yeah. trying to. I'm not trying to to to. To target you on this, but this is an intervention. A man can uh, dream. Um, uh, Twitter love is not real love. Piggy has um, a crotch sword. Bobby, we're not what? targeting you, but we are. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> um, oh big show. I cry every show. Hell intervention cell. Also, like if she's really Irish, you know you're never going to be able to take her out in the sun. <laughs> That wow. That's, um, that's racist? I don't know. I'm not even sure anymore. That's Irishist. Irishist, exactly. So Hell in a Cell should be a fun one. Um, uh, most of us are going to watch it in very interesting states after a marathon of video games this weekend, I'm sure. Um, yep. So, yeah. I'm going to be tired. <laughs> You're going to be tired. Riz going to be tired. <laughs> I I'm hope someone my makes you guys train play. right now. I hope <laughs> someone makes bad. you guys play an hour of Supercard. I play Ooh. an hour of Supercard. Oof! I don't know. How I'm going to broadcast and that I though. I wouldn't go an hour Supercard. <laughs> I've gone. I I I've gone like. I've gone I've a good gone at least forty five minutes. Of it. I've gone a good bit of an hour, <laughs> but usually like something's on the TV, right? So. I don't know, it kind of works out. Anyways, on that note, guys, let me know what did you learn from wrestling this week, Bobby. Um, and guys I in the chat learned, room. I learned that um, Seth Seth uh, Rollins has a jetpack hidden in his vest, and he can shoot up the cage and get to the top of it by the time the replay's over. <laughs> Dude, that was amazing. <laughs> How did that happen? No idea. Magic jetpack. Magic <laughs> jetpack. Mad Mike, what'd you learn? I learned that Ethan Carter has access to space travel. Because he was able to fly to planet Funk, bring back the only living Funkasaurus, change his name, and make him awesome on TNA because he does push ups while he pins droppers. Funk is on a roll. Exactly. That's my second bro display working for the night. LB, what about you? Uh, well, Sorg, I, I learned a bunch of stuff actually um, about the. Uh, the huge match that uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin had against The Rock at WrestleMania when he t- turned heel and joined with uh, Vince McMahon. And uh, so I highly recommend you go and listen to that podcast where basically uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin rewatches that match, does commentary on it, and gives a little <laughs> inside information. Go and check it out. It's the uh, Steve Austin show, Unleashed, and it's very, very good. Go and give it a listen. Awesome. Hmm. Hmm. Awesome. Um, I learned that you, anybody, can have their own tune be the entrance for an independent professional wrestler this past weekend, as B-Rax found out at IWC. Um, you don't know B-Rax. Ask Chachi about B-Rax. At Chachi says. Everybody on Twitter, at Chachi says right now, and ask about the B-Rax. Tell them, I heard you got the lowdown on the B-Rax. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, from the chat room, from the chat room, uh, I'm just going to say it makes me miss King frown. <laughs> uh, from the chat room, Alex Carr says he learned that slam city is opening the door to Saturday morning slam making a comeback. Is that true? Is that news? Uh, I hope so. That'd be great. Uh, I, mean, I miss live tweeting that. I wouldn't be surprised if it starts that dialogue. It was terrible. Real- do we need another hour of wrestling on TV? It was kind of my favorite man. show. Like much like NXT, it was self-contained. It didn't ma- it didn't work with anything else. Remember uh, my Mick live Foley? tweeting of it? What? Yeah, your the, the live tweeting was commercials. amazing. Oh, it's horrible commercials! <laughs> I forgot how bad commercials were. Oh, Ugh. they were awful. Ugh. Remember the the Sonic the Hedgehog election one? I just would go off on every. Oh week? yeah, oh yeah. 
Uh, Tony Garzo learned that Ambrose had his Katie Vick moment on Raw. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Uh, Cars also learned that See No Evil 2 is out this week. Hey, uh, Mad Mike he actually yeah. does a review of it on uh, the Rambling Movie Minute at thatramblingreview.com. So go check that out as it's the Mike and Mike hour again. Um, uh, Wheels learned that Dean is the Joker. That was a great Batman Superman mm-hmm. conversation they had on Raw, by the way. Uh, Riz learned that when you search Big Show Crying, you get numerous amounts of pics of Big Show Crying and Heath Slater. <laughs> Buddy learned that uh, some soldiers have no respect by jumping in the <laughs> ring and interrupting an event. I'm still convinced that's the guy from the SmackDown vs. Raw 2009 game. <laughs> Could be, could be. Yes, Mick Foley's GM was amazing on Saturday Morning Slam. Mm-hmm. Um, he, what was he saying about how I was? He, there, there's a comment we was talking about. I was like, I, uh, like I'm finally out of my contract uh, 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 from WWE as general manager of Saturday Morning Slam after the show had been like canceled for six months. <laughs> so, and there's a picture of Big Show holding a teddy bear. Guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to our awesome chat room, including Jolo John, Alex Carr's buddy, uh, Riz, Eamon, Tony Garza, uh, Wheels. Amen. What's that? N.W. Eamon. And N.W. Eamon. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us here, uh, checking us out in all those places. Uh, keep an eye out this week. Uh, we're putting out on iTunes um all the shows that we're doing the extra shows the um the wrestling game show the tna wrap-up the mayhem wrap-up i'm sorry the midweek wars i'm sorry for tna and impact are all getting their independent streams on itunes you can go uh get it in your itunes if you go uh we had some tweets out if you go to talk show and look up the wrestling mayhem show or sorgatron media you can find all of those streams right now and get that in your itunes um as soon as we can we're going to get in stitcher we're probably going to start it on spreaker try to get on iHeartRadio as well and kind of expand that audience, expand your chances to get that in the meantime. Uh, but also, just look up everything Wrestling May- Mayhem Show. Please subscribe to it on iTunes, on Spreaker, on Stitcher, on iHeartRadio, um, on YouTube as well. And please uh, comment on it. Um, and even uh, whatever podcast you listen to, leave a comment, leave a rating at least on iTunes. Um, it's greatly appreciated and it helps them become discovered uh, so more people can check it out. And it, hopefully it, it, it sticks around, you know. Um, it's definitely not doing it for the money. That's for sure. Uh, and uh, with that, where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, wrestlingmayhemshow.com is where everything at. And you can drop us a line to that email address at good times. Good times yeah. at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WMS0 uh. at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Facebook uh. groups, and uh, Google+. Good Plus. Time. Big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters, helping with the notes and tweets all night long. And please join us here live at live.sogertronmedia.com at 9 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday. And you can support us, of course, on prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, or, uh, or again, just by commenting. Uh, so with that, thanks at my, Mad Mike4883. At Bobby FJ Town, at DJ Launchbox, I'm at Sorgatron, and we are out of here. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.